Hey guys, it's A-Paul and welcome back to my channel. And we are here with another Talking CJ. And today we are going to talk about immunity in criminal law. So what is immunity exactly? It does have the nickname of the get out of jail free card, but it is just a legal status that you can have based on you not getting in legal trouble for whatever you're confessing to or testifying to, to help gain information of putting another criminal behind bars usually. It can also be used in civil cases, but you do mostly see them in criminal cases. And this one really bounces off the Fifth Amendment of you may remain silent, but basically it's the amendment that helps you not self-incriminate. And it's thought to be self-incriminating when the information that you give somebody ends up being like direct evidence of a crime or information that could lead to evidence of a crime. But a prosecutor can override your right to the Fifth Amendment by granting you witness immunity in exchange for your testimony, which is usually the most common we hear about. But here's the thing with the immunity defense. You can only get it if you have information that helps lead almost directly to a crime. They aren't just granting it for anybody in the case. You have to have information that they need. I mean, that only makes sense, right? So let's talk about the main types. There is an immunity for politicians, and there are many forms of politician immunity, and it's given to government officials to help them deal with things and proceed with issues without the fear of of being sued or charged with a crime for doing so. Now there's also immunity of government officials that has quite a few in it also. There's judicial immunity, absolute immunity, diplomatic immunity, qualified immunity. And with all the BLM protests that have been going on, this is one that I feel like we have heard quite a bit about lately because qualified immunity protects officials in law enforcement from liability of their actions during their job. But people assume that if you're a police officer, qualified immunity just completely protects you from everything you do. And that is just absolutely not the case. It does protect law enforcement with their decisions if they don't necessarily have a fair warning to what they're about to do. So if they acted on instinct, usually it would be under qualified immunity. It does not protect the officer who commits a crime that he or she she could be arrested for. If it's an abuse of power, if this is not used to protect the officer and others, you are not going to qualify for this. If you have intentionally committed a crime while you're a police officer, it's not going to cover you for this. This immunity is strictly for police officers to be able to act freely under good intentions. But qualified immunity also protects state and federal lawmakers. And it's also big to note that qualified immunity really is only for civil cases. They aren't going to usually use qualified immunity for criminal cases. It's not going to protect an officer in criminal court because if they intentionally violated someone's rights, qualified immunity is not for them to use. There's also a group of immunities that come to you just for being a residential citizen of the United States. Amnesty law, you have a spousal privilege, and the biggest one you usually hear about is witness immunity. It gives people permission to speak freely while testifying or in an investigation to collect evidence or information about the criminal case without having to worry about being convicted for whatever they testify to. And there's two different types of this immunity. There is transactional immunity, which which is also known as total immunity. It gives you complete complete protection for prosecution and future prosecution on this issue that you're talking about. And the federal government usually doesn't like this one as much, obviously. So the one that they try to use the most is called use immunity, which is also known as use and derivative use immunity. 
and this one's mostly used by state and federal prosecutors it is a little bit more restrictive it protects you from whatever you're saying in your testimony or statement in the investigation but it does not protect you if they find evidence that was not related to your testimony on a crime you then will be able to be arrested no matter what so that one is really tricky so what are the risks so one risk is that a person will falsely accuse others and really try to minimize how much they were involved and you also see something with transactional immunity where it's called an immunity bath where they just start confessing to a lot of different crimes that they've committed and this causes a lot of issues because the prosecution can charge this person anything that is unrelated to the case that they are working on another thing is that immunized testimony has been rumored to be able to be bought and be pretty unreliable just at the fact that this person could say anything so in deciding whether someone should have immunity, they think of the seriousness of the crime. And they usually only consider giving someone immunity if they haven't committed as serious of a crime as whatever they're charging. But another thing is that immunity will probably not be granted in smaller cases. This is used for big cases that we need information on, such as murders, sexual assaults, uh, anything you Usually that has to do with like serious cases. You also really have to look into the reliability of this witness. Your testimony has to be a pretty major part of what happened in this case for them to really consider it. And they also have to look into your involvement in the crime. They are not going to give someone immunity for a small, small portion of this crime's timeline. You're going to have to have been pretty involved to be able to to give enough information that would really help the case. And I would like to point out that if you are a witness that has agreed to testify for immunity, you have to testify. You can't change your mind. And if you decide not to show up or just not to testify, you will be held in contempt of court and probably be subjected to at least fines and maybe jail time. So don't mess around with that. And also, remember that any statement before they have offered you immunity is not protected under immunity. So definitely be careful what you say. Remember your rights and really evaluate how involved you were in this case. And maybe talk to a lawyer about talking to them about immunity. If you are in any type of situation that you're going to need to be a part of a court case, whether that's criminal or civil, and are looking into what immunity means and if it can can be granted to you. I know you guys know I am a huge advocate for consulting a lawyer. There is no better person to truly ask about this, specifically a criminal defense lawyer. They will know the ins and outs of all of this. This is what they do every day and they can truly help you. Do not try to go through this alone. They are the experts so you need to listen to them but definitely don't try to tackle this subject alone. It is a lot and there's loopholes that people will find. So like I said, always just suggest to consult a lawyer, preferably in this case a criminal defense lawyer. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit about immunity and leave anything below that you find interesting about it. Also leave below in the comments any ideas you have for talking CJs. And if you haven't already, go back and watch my Unsolved in West Virginia series. I absolutely love it. I work so hard on it and season two is about to come out. Please like and subscribe for me and hit that notification button. That way you're notified the next time I upload. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!